Recognize, market's leading video verification system, installation training. Recognize surveillance kits can be ordered from local Recognize distributors. Find out more and order a test kit via Recognize website, www.recognize.com. For security reasons, the equipment is shipped with default factory configuration and in a deactivated state. The recognized system consists of detectors equipped with a PIR motion sensor, cameras and an IR flash for night photos. The bridge is a communication module that gathers all alarm photos from nearby detectors using the 2.4 GHz ZigBee frequencies and sends them to the recognized server using available mobile networks. The Recognize app and the connector moat serve as on-site installation tools for testing and configuring the devices. If needed, the system can be complemented with a siren unit, which will sound a loud audio alarm to deter intruders. To activate the Recognize system for quick deployment, it is first necessary to do the initial system configuration, to charge the batteries and to assign user rights to all appropriate operators and installers before installation. Please note that recognized devices need to be configured and tested for connectivity before the system installation. Pre-configured devices guarantee a fast system installation in the field and prevent any technical issues arising from untested SIM cards, uncharged batteries, or insufficient user rights. With the first order, your recognized distributor will provide you with user access information, server address, username and password. Use these credentials to log into the server to view alarms via your browser and to log into the server via the Recognize Android app. Make sure to change the password after logging in. First, charge all recognized batteries. It may take up to eight hours to charge empty recognized batteries, so it makes sense to do it in advance. For shipping, the batteries have 40% of voltage due to transport safety regulations. Also, do not forget to charge the connector mode and smartphone batteries. The bridge unit and also recognize Android app require network connectivity. Purchase standard-sized SIM cards with suggested minimum monthly data limit of at least 3 GB for each bridge. It is highly recommended to test the SIM card in a smartphone for connectivity before inserting the SIM into the bridge to ensure that the SIM is registered in the mobile network and is connecting without any issues. As a first step, please check that the SIM card used would not be locked by the four-digit PIN request. In order to do so, Tap on the Smartphone Settings menu and find the security settings. From there, find the SIM card lock sub-menu. Insert your SIM card PIN code to disable the SIM lock. After that, the bridge unit will be able to automatically access the mobile data connection offered by the SIM card. Please note that depending on the Android version, the exact menu names and locations may differ. The settings search bar offered by the Android operating system is a good tool to find the correct menus. Proceed to test the internet connectivity of the SIM card. In case the phone does not display a mobile data signal in the upper menu bar, go to Settings, Connections, Mobile Networks, Network Operators and register the SIM in the network. Check that the smartphone Wi-Fi is disabled and mobile data is enabled before testing connectivity. Stream a YouTube video or run a speed test app to verify mobile data connectivity of the SIM card. It is important to find out the APN of the SIM. Ask it from the telecom operator support or Google it. It is also possible to double-check the APN in the smartphone settings, connections, mobile networks, access point names menu, where it is downloaded automatically from the mobile network. A bridge SIM card is always a standard-sized large SIM. After the SIM has been successfully tested, insert the SIM card into the bridge SIM card slot. Make sure that the SIM is locked into the SIM socket in the correct position. Proceed to fasten the bridge antennas, then insert all four batteries and fasten them with nuts. 
Please note that for ease of use, the new compact version of the bridge has only one antenna for 2.4 GHz communication, and the 4G antenna is internal. The antennas must always be attached to the bridge before inserting the batteries. To configure the bridge unit, the Recognize app needs to be used. Please note that in order for the Recognize app to be able to synchronize data with the Recognize server, it also needs internet connectivity. Please log into a Wi-Fi network or hotspot with the smartphone, or insert a working SIM card to ensure network connectivity for the smart device. The app can communicate with recognized devices in a 30-meter radius using the Bluetooth of the smart device. Make sure to enable the Bluetooth and the GPS of the smart device. In addition, before starting the app, switch on the connector mode, which will interpret the Bluetooth radio of the smart device into a 2.4 GHz radio used by the recognized devices. Keep the connector mode in a dry place like your pocket during the installation process. To use the Recognize app, simply tap on the Recognize icon on the smart device's desktop. The app will find the connector moat and make a connection to it. Before use, the app requires a login to the server. Use the same username and password that you use to log into the Recognize cloud server via your browser. The login information is received with the first Recognize kit from your Recognize distributor or from the Recognize support team. An example of a correct format of the server address for the Recognize app is as follows. After login, the app will synchronize the device name and coordinates to your Recognize server. Once logged in, tap on App Settings, App Certificate, and choose the correct security certificate file to access your devices. The security certificate ensures that only authorized users are able to see and modify device configuration. Just as the login information, the client-specific security certificate can be obtained from a local recognized distributor or from a recognized support email. The app automatically searches for all recognized devices in a 30-meter radius and displays them as a list. By default, all devices are on channel 22 of the 2.4 GHz radio frequency. In case you have changed the device channel, please make a long press on the loop icon to change the channel scanned. The app scans only one channel at a time. To activate the system, it is necessary to configure the bridge unit to connect to a mobile network. Tap on the bridge icon to open the bridge device view. Tap on the device configuration icon. For each device, the Recognize app offers a number of configurable parameters, but to activate the system, you only need to change two bridge parameters. Tap on the parameter server address. Insert your server address in the correct format as shown on the screen. Then tap on the APN parameter to insert the access point name for the chosen SIM card. Depending on the chosen mobile operator, the APN user and APN password may need to be saved as well. Contact your mobile operator technical support for detailed information. After the bridge configuration, check the bridge connectivity to the mobile network. Shake the bridge gently to initiate a theft alarm. Reload the bridge parameters view to see the mobile RSSI or received signal strength indicator in decibels. Please note that during the first time, it may take up to 10 to 15 minutes for the SIM card to connect to the mobile network. Pay attention also to the mobile bit error rate, which indicates packet loss percentage. Repeat the theft alarms and reload bridge parameters during several minutes if needed. In case the SIM card still does not connect to the mobile network, the bridge device configuration menu will display a mobile connection error. Please refer to the Recognize App User Manual for more information on the potential error code meaning. All user manuals can be found in the Recognize Cloud Support menu.
Once the bridge has been successfully configured and it displays mobile signal strength in the mobile RSSI line, switch off the connect emote and test that the theft alarms are arriving to the recognized cloud server. Open the server address using your network browser and log in with the username and password assigned to you. Once the Recognize app and Connect Emote have been switched off, consecutive theft alarms will appear in the Recognize Cloud Monitoring user interface. If the alarms are delayed, try restarting the bridge by removing all the batteries for a short while. Restarting forces the bridge to cut all ongoing alarm traffic and read the newly inserted configuration immediately. Please note that only a moderator-level user is able to see all new connecting devices. Always log in as a moderator to activate new devices and also to assign user rights to these new devices to other installers and operators. In the server user interface, first adjust the time zone and language in the upper right corner preferences menu. Please note that Recognize user manuals are always available in the Support menu of the Recognize Cloud. Once theft alarms from the bridge have arrived into the cloud, power up the detectors in the kit you are activating. Make a few alarms with each detector in the kit. After that, please turn detectors away from any constant movement to avoid a large number of nuisance alarms. If the bridge and detectors are on the same radio channel and have the same security certificate, then alarms will arrive in the recognized cloud shortly. In case you need to install several bridges in the same site, then group devices onto different 2.4 GHz channels. Each device group should consist of one bridge and up to eight detectors. Tap on the device name, go to the device configuration menu. Find the parameter Default Channel and change the channel to a different one. Repeat the same for all devices that are in the same group. Devices that are on the same channel will start communicating automatically. It is a good practice to leave at least one free channel between the channels that are used. Please note that after the new channel is saved, the Recognize app is not displaying the device anymore. To find the device again, please change the app channel and scan the corresponding channel again. After the first alarms from all the devices have been received, group the devices into appropriate areas. Grouping the devices allows better device management, better filtering of incoming alarms, and also allows to assign area-based user access. Go to the Devices menu. Name all the recognized devices in the area. It is a good practice to include the 2.4 GHz radio channel of the device into its name and also the short ID of the device. Click on the Create New Area button. Give the area a recognizable name and add devices into the created area. In case you choose to add the siren unit to the setup, perform a similar connectivity check as with the bridge. Insert batteries and make a theft alarm to make the siren connect to the server. Then add it into the same device area with other devices in the user interface. The siren can be triggered only by recognized devices in the same device area. Configure the siren to sound the audio alarm automatically with each alarm from the chosen device or to sound only when triggered manually by an operator. After the device areas have been created, go to Management, Users and create a new user account for the future end user. The new user can be a moderator level user with access to all devices or it can be a user with limited access to specific device areas only. Please note that a user phone number is required to use the Armit app. The user email is needed to send the monthly recognized technical newsletter informing the user of new features, software updates, and other important technical information. In case the new devices need to be armed as per schedule, then this can be configured in the Devices menu. Make sure that all devices are powered up and are in armed state. Define the schedule for the week or on a day-by-day -day basis. 
Choose the devices and apply the inserted schedule by clicking Apply Schedule. The schedule will be synchronized to devices with the next alarm or routine check. Schedule syncing status can be viewed in the device's table view. In addition to scheduling, it is possible to configure other device parameters of the recognized devices via the device's menu. Please refer to the Recognize User Interface Manual for more precise information on different configurable parameters. In case you need the alarms to be forwarded to third-party monitoring stations, please contact Recognize Support at support at recognize.com. To set up the alarm forwarding, IP address and port of the receiving server are needed. Setting up the alarm forwarding to third-party monitoring stations usually takes one to two workdays, so please plan this ahead. After connectivity tests, device grouping and assigning the user rights, the Recognize Kit is ready for fast deployment in the field. At the installation site, take a moment to assess the site and plan the deployment of detectors and bridge so that they would have a good 2.4 GHz radio connectivity between detectors and bridge. Detector locations should be chosen so that their motion sensors would cover the expected movement corridors and hotspots in the most efficient way. Ideally, the bridge should be installed at an elevated location with roughly equal distances from all the detectors to ensure good connectivity. Try to make an installation plan allowing a direct line of sight between bridge and detectors and a good mobile signal for the bridge. Please note that in case of an ideal direct line of sight, the maximum suggested distance between a detector and the bridge must not exceed 500 meters. Maximum alarm transfer speed is guaranteed by a shortest possible distance between the recognized bridge and detector. Before the installation, always check visually that all devices are intact. The battery rubber seals are in place to ensure water resistance. Remember to always use four batteries on the bridge unit to make it waterproof. Always measure the mobile signal as the first step in a new location. Use the Recognize Android app as outlined in the before installation video. Power up the connector mode and open the app. Shake the pre-configured bridge and open the bridge device configuration menu to see the mobile RSSI value in decibels. The pre-configured bridge displays the signal quickly and there is no need for any additional troubleshooting in the field. In case of a poor signal, measure the signal in a more elevated location to find the strongest signal possible. The lower the decibel value, the better is the signal. An average mobile signal is between minus 50 to minus 90 decibels. For good alarm traffic, any mobile signal under 100 decibels is accepted for the recognized system. Find a suitable place to install the bridge. Make sure that the bridge is installed in the correct vertical position. Avoid any radio wave obstacles directly around the bridge antennas. If needed, measure the mobile signal at the exact final installation location. Avoid close proximity of objects like tall concrete walls, metal objects, and electric devices. Don't install underground or in cavities. Install in an elevated position in regions with weak mobile coverage. Once the bridge is installed, install the detectors at their planned locations next. Fasten the ball head screw or the installation plate on the surface at an approximate ideal height of 2.1 meters. 
Check visually that the detector motion sensor is pointed at a right angle of approximately 12 degrees downwards in case of flat ground. Insert the battery last to avoid numerous photos of your own face. When the batteries are inserted, perform a trace route to measure the radio connection between the detector and the bridge. This gives a precise 2.4 GHz radio signal reading and packet loss percentage in real time. The average signal strength is between minus 60 and minus 90 decibels. This is a vital tool during the detector installation that helps to avoid installing devices into locations where there is no connectivity to the recognized server. The trace function must be enabled from the app settings menu. A good practice for detector installation is to direct the detector so that a potential intruder or vehicle would be spending as much time in a trigger area as possible. Avoid pointing the detector at the alleged movement path perpendicularly, as the person or vehicle may move too quickly to be captured on photo. A diagonal angle to the expected movement path will give better results. Install the detector on a stable surface. Avoid thin trees and posts that can move in the wind. This helps to prevent false alarms due to wind or passing traffic vibrations. Make sure that there are no small branches or leaves in a 150 degree angle and a 3 meter radius from the detector that may cause false alarms and infrared flash overexposure in night photos. Try to avoid larger moving objects, e.g. large bushes or smaller trees moving in the wind, in the whole detection area of 30 meters. Use the Recognize app to request a test photo from the detector. This helps to check if the detector passive infrared motion sensor is covering the desired area most efficiently. To request a photo from the detector, press the Load button in the Detector view of the Recognize app. This will request a photo from the chosen detector. Clicking on the Show Alarm area after requesting a test photo displays the motion detection coverage areas of the PIR sensor on the alarm photo. Make sure that the uppermost 30 meter coverage zone is pointed at the stomach of a potential intruder at the desired maximum distance. For example, stand at a 25 to 30 meter distance and adjust the detector angle so that the centermost squares would point at your midsection. The Recognize app also allows you to change different device specific parameters. For example, it is possible to quickly save a lower tamper sensitivity value in areas with heavy machinery working on site, or save a 10 second PIR deadband duration, which allows an alarm to be triggered with a maximum interval of 10 seconds between consecutive alarms. This may be useful in areas of busy movement to limit the overall number of incoming alarms. Most parameters can be changed also in the Recognize Cloud UI remotely, which is more convenient. After the configuration, switch off the Recognize app and connect a moat. The final test is to trigger a few alarms with each detector and verify that they arrive in the Recognize Cloud. It is possible to log into the Recognize Cloud using the smartphone or tablet on the site. You can also phone the operator or monitoring station and verify that alarms from each detector have arrived via phone. In case the alarms are forwarded to a third-party monitoring station, it is a good idea to contact the monitoring station operator and verify that the first alarms from the installed site were received by the monitoring station. Install the siren so that it would have a direct line of sight with the bridge unit. Make sure that the siren is on the same 2.4 GHz channel with other recognized devices installed in the area. Always use four batteries or dummy batteries to hermetically seal all battery slots of the siren. Use the trace function in the Recognize app to measure the 2.4 GHz radio link with the bridge unit.
Make a test alarm with the siren on any other device to test the siren audio alarm. To sound the siren audio alarm, trigger the siren either from the Recognize App Siren menu or using the Server Siren device view. The Recognize system has now been installed and each device's connectivity to the server verified. The site is now up and operational. Recognize support is available at support at recognize.com.